Oh, hi, this is Rich McLean and this is Crystal the Husky. Well, my name used to be Rich McLean, now it's Baron Dodger. And I please ask you to watch this video because it's hard to explain, but I'm a murder victim. And um, it's also a human rights issue with the UNHCR and it's obliteration of a human rights um, offence. It also um, is um, in breach of every single legal human rights charter that there is. And I prove with, it's not a delusion in my head, that is a demonstrable phenomenon that's proven with facts, that there is a demonstrable phenomenon of a conspiracy. And it's targeting me as an individual. And um, I'm totally isolated in the world. I have no one and nothing. I have no money, no home no legal rights, no human rights, and they're going to jail me. And before I go to jail, I'm not going to let them take me to suffer anymore because I've got a mental illness and um, I've already suffered enough and I've already given enough. I've given everything. And um, I'm also a doctor. Not that it got me much, but it proves critical thought. And my thoughts are in this next video. So can you please... Spare half an hour, have a listen, and um, just even if I can offer a sweetener for the pers first person to act to get me the um, prosperity and the justice that I need, I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars, and I'll also give a hundred thousand dollars to the charity of your choice. And um, so, have a listen, it's a bit of a rant. It's true I'm crazy, but it's also true. There's a conspiracy happening. Crystal, sit, 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 sit. And this is Crystal. And um, she's been threatened to be killed and I live in fear. And I've been threatened to be killed. It's covert, it's silent, and everyone knows it. And um, it's happening before our very eyes. So please have a look at this next um, half hour video. Because I want to live. And all I want to do, it's serve humanity, so um, have a listen. Thanks. Crystal, how you doing? Come here, stop, 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 stop. sit, sit, hey, <laughs> sit, sit. She's so naughty. Hello, this is Baron Dodger. I was just having a chat to someone on text, really a last hurrah for surviving on the planet, and um, he was asking me um, some questions, and it felt like I was like rowing a canoe with knitting needles trying to explain this thing to him. So I thought I'd make a video to explain. So hello, my friend, who potential friend who um, I was talking to. Um, yeah, so the situation is, I was explaining, I mean, a government conspiracy and gang stalking and um, persecution and all this kind of stuff. Crystal, come here, come on! <laughs> She's so naughty. Anyway, um, yeah, so the gist, gist of it is, I've got no home, I've got no money, I've got no human rights, and I've got no legal rights. And um, there's a gang stalking conspiracy, which is a, from the government, and it's um, aiming to kill me. Now, I know this because I've already died. So I killed myself three years ago um, from the profound neglect and oppression um, that was orchestrated upon me. And um, for what, want of a better term, I died. And um, they revived me from death. And this is why I've got a bit of a brain injury. Um, and I can't think, and I find it hard to structure my days and get organized. It's very difficult. And it's true that I've got a mental illness. So um, I actually hear voices. They could be, you know, awful voices. Pedophile, faggot, rapist, cunt, fucking cunt. We're going to fucking kill you, that kind of thing. Which isn't very nice anyway. But um, the thing is, this can, I'm just having a seat. This conspiracy has um, now weaponized that as a way um, in which to exploit and persecute and demonize me. And it's pretty apparent. It's really cruel. And it's... um way that um, this malicious movement to elicit harm, my harm, um, has enacted it in a very public and private way. So my persecution's political, 
and it's systemic. And um, I really don't know what to do. Um, Crystal, come out. So, um, come out. Um, yeah, so basically, um, I've, 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 I've been drugged and raped by Steve Isonides, my former ASIO partner and fiance of five years. And uh, we were together, it is a fact, but no government agency, no police officer, no healthcare worker, no politician, and no public official will even acknowledge that that relationship existed. So this for me creates um, a false narrative that the government's um, putting forward. And that false narrative is the official record, but it's not consistent with reality. And you know, people say I'm psychotic and I'm crazy, but in actual fact, the world's crazier. And the government has been really, really cruel to me. I'm um, a person who's been an advocate for 30 years helping people, and I still want to help people. That's all that I want. All that I want is to live in society and serve the people in it. But I can't do that with no home, with no money, with no legal rights, with no human rights, with no access to the law, with no social equity, with no friends, no family, and no support. I've got no psychologist, I've got no psychiatrist, I haven't even got a GP. I feel okay because I've just shut up a speedball and I need a drug and alcohol counsellor. I take drugs really not because of my fault because um, it's to deal with the profound systemic neglect and abuse that's happening to me. And it's also because I've been denied my dexamphetamine script, which is for my ADHD. And it goes to mimic the clarity, which I so desperately need to think my way, way out of this terrible, terrible conspiracy to kill. Now, um, I'll just draw this parable. So if you've got a, um, a, a terrorist organization and a, and a terrorist, and he goes, uh, goes over, gets a bomb and blows himself up in front of a whole lot of people, kills them. Now that is a human tragedy. It's also very random and it's also um, anonymous. He doesn't know who he's killing. He's just doing it for Allah and doing it because um, he's gonna be served paradise in the afterlife. It's an ideological thing and it's quite insane, especially for the people who suffered um, those deaths and for especially their loved ones who, who can um, really realize that um, there is an insanity to war and there is an insanity also to love. They say nothing is fair in love and war. What's the saying? All is fair in love and war. I've only just realized that means nothing is fair. And you know what? Everything is under the auspice of either a war or love. So the world's not fair. And um, so I've been an advocate for 30 years and I've written a human rights award winning book called Recovered Not Cured, A Journey Through Schizophrenia about my experience with having a psychosis and the various um, problems that I had um, in that time. And it was amazingly awarded. I was awarded a Human Rights Award. I got Sane's Book of the Year. I was, a, I was cited as a courageous and brave book. And um, sadly for me, um, it was a brave book and it was courageous and I still am. And um, the good things about that is the praise for helping people who are strangers who are also going through mental health issues. Um, but the bad part was um, the humiliation, the public um, shaming, um, the stigma, shame, oppression and discrimination which happened as a result of my personal story in the public domain. And the Herald Sun vilified me in an absurd way which got my words and called the article My Descent Into Madness, How Schizophrenia Stole Richard McLean's Mind. And um, I've changed my name from Richard McLean, he died. But, um, but that was a terrible thing to happen to me. And um, it, was, it was illegal. It was using my words out of context and it had an aim. That aim was to cause me damage. And I did it in a public way and I did it in full view of everyone. 
And so within a couple of weeks, I was fired from my job at the age. So it wasn't just that I was rusted off and I left. It wasn't that I resigned. It was that um, because this book was out there and because um, of the shame, stigma, prejudice and discrimination that surrounds mental health diagnoses, I was then a targeted individual. From that time, I've been a targeted individual of the Australian government. And I can demonstrate that very, very easily. There are a couple of things that happened to me later in life in which um, I actually became even more targeted. And as a person whose moral and ethical obligation it has been to be honest and to call out corruption where I see it for the sake of democracy and for the sake of humanity, regardless of who's in power, I'm now a failed whistleblower. And I'm a failed whistleblower in a lot of government agencies, such as the Attorney General's Office, the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet, the NDIS, DSS, APRA, ASIC, and, um, and the Federal Court. Now, um, as a rejected whistleblower, and as someone who's calling out corruption, that is so systemic and profound, it really boggles the mind. Um, and as a rejected whistleblower, I've been left open to vulnerability and to further corruption, and also to reprisals, financial and political. And um, since um, I have, um, I'm gonna get this story straight. Since I was um, rejected from my public interest disclosures on account of that I'm not a public official, but in actual fact, I satisfy criteria to make a Public Interest Disclosure Act because I'm the former partner of a senior public official. That gives me an ability to make a PID. And additionally, I'm also a public official because I was contracted to be employed at a government agency, the NDIS. That was my contract. I was contracted to be employed. That makes me a public official. In addition to that, I was a nurse in a public hospital, and that makes me a former public official. And if that doesn't satisfy the criteria, then um, I have actually got a rejected public interest disclosure from Scott Treadwell at the Federal Court. And whilst he disregarded and rejected my public interest disclosure, he did inadvertently admit a couple of things. One of them is that he's satisfied on the um, evidence that I've provided that I was an employee of the DSS. And the DSS is a statutory agency that oversees the NDIS and I have the DSS login. And I've got receipts and I was paid by them. I'm an employee. That makes me a public official. So it's well within my remit and it is well, well, in numerous ways, I am eligible to make these public interest disclosures that need to be acknowledged and there is no question that they need to be accepted. But unfortunately for me, um, all of my public interest disclosures were rejected um, for obtuse and absurd reasons. And the more this goes on, the more absurd and the more elaborate the lies and the deceit is in which um, to reject me my rights, my human rights, my legal rights, and to reject all um, liability um, for helping me to destroy every single structure that I have that would actually help me rebuild my life. And um, if if I, um, and, and, and anyone who could possibly help me, like any lawyer, any public official, any politician, or any public servant, they've already been worded up on who I am not to help me. And this is a profound and systemic and very covert and secretive conspiracy. The bad thing about it is that everybody knows everybody knows that i'm a mad person everybody knows that i've taken drugs everybody knows i've had regretful sex everybody knows i'm gay everyone knows all sorts of things about me and they exploit those vulnerabilities and prejudices in order to um, deflect any single help from me from lawyers politicians anyone at all now it's been a very difficult road and me being a targeted individual has been happening for a very long time. Now, um, in February 2021, um, I killed myself out of um, the neglect, the deceit and the conspiracy 
that had marred my life, that had made me homeless, and that had redacted intentionally every single piece of prosperity that I had coming to me for 20 years. And I've battled an uphill battle the whole time, and I've actually gone out of my way to help people who were marginalised and who needed my help and my experience and my narrative and my story and all the things that I have experienced in order to help them have a better life and I did it in altruism and I did it consistently and I did it for 30 years and I've spoken in Australian Parliament, they know who I am. I've spoken from Montreal in Canada um, to um, Dubbo in New South Wales to all the radio and TV stations. And I've spoken on ABC News um, National, I've spoken on the Today Show, I've spoken on PBS, Triple J, Stateline, Dateline, uh, Triple R, you name it, I've spoken on it. People know who I am. Now I'm gonna have to sit here and suffer the indignity and the human neglect of every single one of those companies, institutions, schools, agencies, radio stations, and places that I spoke at to accept that they're not gonna help me in my situation. And that for me is a profound way that I know that um, I've been character assassinated. Now, it's not a really intelligent thing to tell people that um, you are crazy because um, I didn't see that um, as something to be shamed of. I saw it as something to be constructive and um, more render and burnish what reality is and my place in it compared to the rest of society. And that's what I was doing by writing the book. Now, I was very, very naive to think that people wouldn't treat me very differently. And then I was fired from the age and I had a terrible time at all sorts of agencies and places for years. Now, um, currently, I'm banned at the Australian Financial Complaints Authority. That is a place you go to get um, any financial um, detriment or settlement out of the way and um, established by an ombudsman. Tim Goss from AFCA and David Lockie, I think his name is, uh, at, 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 um, at there and the other the, the head there, they've banned me from their organisation. Now that's an um, Australian statutory authority. That's like the post office, that's like Centrelink, that's like the police and they've banned me. Now that's an absurd way of catastrophically character assassinating someone as a result of that assassination. And also it's a way and a method in which to redact someone's prosperity and the potential of getting into that prosperity systemically and politically. Across the road, their friends at the Australian Human Rights Commission, Liz Lisberg, um, she rejected a million dollar settlement with an Australian super company at TAL. And she said, sorry, it's not gonna happen, even though there was a conciliation booked and planned and they agreed to come to it and she canceled it. She alone. And I said to her, and you can look at all these recordings on my YouTube channel, I've recorded them because I'm paranoid that there's a conspiracy and you know what, there was. And um, so she's free kicked a million dollar deal to the opposition and that's an absurd amount of injustice. Once the Australian Human Rights Commission were out of the fucking way, I actually had in a settlement with TAL and Australian Super of $50,000. And that was as a compensation to me for being rejected by income protection and um, insurance on the basis that um, I had a disability. So um, you can see if we triangulate things from AFCA to um, the Australian Human Rights Commission, who also refuse to investigate my documented human rights abuses from a verified NDIS employer. I worked with him for four months. He documented my abuse, my neglect, this systemic problem of um, persecution that's happening to me. And the Australian Human Rights Commission, who were tasked with actually doing the work um, to investigate human rights commission um, abuses, have rejected unanimously to investigate it whatsoever. Now, this is a problem for me. Um, when I had my um, banning at AFCA and the Australian Human Rights Commission were rejecting me, I really did feel like there was a systemic um, blackout for me. Now, this all goes back to 2017, uh, where I opposed a doctor in a malpractice case, and his lawyer, Russell Ball, was a man who informs government policy and advises the Ombudsman. Now, I didn't know this yet. He managed to silence legitimate evidence 
the Health Complaints Commissioner, the Health and Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, the Police, at IBAC, at NHPOPC, at APRA, at um, um, the Victorian Inspectorate, and also the Ombudsman, of whom he's a person who informs their ideas and their policy. Now, that in itself is a conspiracy. But when I was suffering the stuff at Australian Human Rights Commission in Africa, and I was awaiting my work cover case, um, which had um, been shepherded from WorkSafe in Victoria, where it should have been heard because I was being paid by Victorian money, uh, the Victorian statutory agency before the NDIS rolled out, and um, and then um, to um, to Comcare, who was Paul Fowl, who was the guy who rejected it there, on account of, I'm not an employer, I'm not an employee. What was I doing all that time? I was just making a cunt of myself, you know. I was working, helping people in the community for um, for two years, running my own business very successfully, and um, a contracted thing with the government, with the NDIS, making me a public official. I was an employee. It was um, rejected on account of me not being an employee by Paul Fowler at Comcare. Paul Fowler is the old boss at WorkSafe. And hello, that's called corruption. Now, um, as it was doomed to fail, which it clearly was, it got sent to um, the AAT, I appealed it and went to the AAT. The AAT is nothing but another government statutory agency which is um, informed by the same policies and the same mandate as the overarching ruling power. And I was pretty sure that it was doomed to fail there. Kate Watson was a government lawyer who was defending the government's position of already saying no and me as being a person who's being character assassinated and um, locked out of all legal help across the board I've never had a lawyer in my life who hasn't been deceitful or hasn't been authentic with me and had an honest conversation which I'm doing now and um, I've never had someone to represent me I had to go in blind and um, I got Sue Ellen's help but she was hopeless and um, um, it got ruled that um, they upheld the decision I was not a worker for the employ for the purposes of the SRC Act, and that meant for me a uh, eight hundred and something thousand dollar rejection, and um, there was nothing I could do about it. I appealed at the AAT that it is against the Charter of Human Rights of a person with a disability for them not to have access to the law, equality to the law, and access to justice. And further, they came back and through gaslighting, neglect, rejection, however they wanted to do it, in an absurd rejection, they upheld the decision. And I've tried to talk to the Attorney General, Mark Dreyfus, who sees all over this, but he's not responding to me. Now, um, before Mark Dreyfus was there, it was Michaelia Cash, and I actually saw that this corruption was happening and I detailed it and I said to her, this is a bit of a fuck situation, you need to um, actually step up and correct this AAT decision before it fails. And she said to me, I'm not in a position to be able to um, influence an individual's case. And you know, if you are feeling distress, here's the number for the SANE helpline. Now the SANE helpline is the book, um, is, is the company where my book was SANE Australia's book of the year. And I was a SANE speaker and I, I donated many hours, many, many hours and weeks and years to that organisation and now, they won't even have a bar on me. Not the CEO, not anyone there. And that's systemic and political, and that's from everyone um, really in the world. I can't understand it. It's like a biblical forsaking. But anyway, so Michaelia Cash didn't do anything. Mark Dreyfus, and if you have a look at my, my website, that's me on the website with Mark Dreyfus. He knows who I am. He absolutely knows who I am. And his office, without even um, getting him organized, um, referred me to the Ombudsman, and to AGIS, who investigate corruption at ASIO, where my former partner worked and who I was uh, engaged to for five years and who owes me a $500,000 settlement right there. Except there's no public agent, no um, public official, no lawyer, no police officer, no healthcare worker, not even the entirety of all of my family and friends will even defend me on his oppression and Steve Isonides, um incredible and mind-boggling narcissistic manipulation of an entire country to delegitimize my experience of five years and say it didn't happen not one person's willing to admit it i can't believe it i really fucking can't and um so agis are aware of steve's exploitation of me and he won't um 
he won't, um, they, they won't investigate him. The Commonwealth Ombudsman, where I'm a failed whistleblower, um, have refused all future correspondence. That's everything. All future correspondence, I can't complain. I actually did. I complained about AFCA. They said, it's not our position to intervene. Whose position is it in to, to intervene when I'm squatting, I'm homeless, I'm staying at the guest of Zabi Hussain Kiln, a, a director of Free Living Australia, in a house where I'm not paying rent because I can't, I literally have no money, I'm bankrupt, I have debts coming out, I owe hundreds of thousand dollars. I'm staying there as a guest, just waiting. The weeks in, weeks out, and no one's intervening because the police have arrested me. Now, I've been drugged and raped. I've been violently attacked by a, a covert government agent inside a hospital. This abuse and neglect that it's been systemic and proven as facts, not a fantasy in my head, but a demonstrable phenomenon that is actually persecuting me and pushing me to the fucking edge every fucking day. It actually did it three years ago inside Worry Mercy Hospital, who were also fucking in on it, and they fucking whitewashed me dying in their fucking institution. That's not a fucking joke. I was literally moved to remove myself from this fucking reality with every fucking judgmental human cunt that is fucking existing left in it. And for, for want of a better word, everyone is judgmental. It is a human fucking trait. I feel like the return of Jesus fucking Christ that I've actually am aware of all your human judgments. And I know you're all judgmental and it's implied in your very fucking nature. I'm an innocent person. I've literally been crucified. And then I was resurrected by the hand of fucking the Lord. I died. I wasn't supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be here now. I feel like I've got a fucking purpose. And then for the next three years after I was revived from certain death in Warby Mercy Hospital, there's been a fucking whitewashing of that tragedy. You can see my lip doesn't even move properly because of the thing. I can't feel my feet. I can fairly fucking remember everything or organise myself. Hard enough when you've got a mental illness and now a fucking brain detriment and now fucking also the subject of a targeted individual of a fucking malicious government conspiracy to fucking kill you. But that's what gang stalking is. Gang stalking's an insidious way of targeting a single person and getting people to act to their detriment. My persecution is systemic and it's political and I'm followed all of the time. I've got evidence on my website and my YouTube channel of government agents filming me and my house and surveilling me. Go and have a look. And um, it is an absurd and covert way that they are abusing me, neglecting me, and acting with an intention of malice, and it has a fucking goal, and that's to kill me. And they haven't been able to. For three years after I was revived from death, I lived in fucking poverty, bankrupt, owing money, addicted to drugs because I couldn't afford any medicine, and because they wouldn't give me the script of my dexamphetamine, which I fucking need for my ADHD, if I had fucking cancer and they refused me chemotherapy, there'd be fucking outrage. But because I've got ADHD, an invisible mental illness, that doesn't negate that they can't fucking treat me with the medicine that I need. That's a fucking absurd, insane fucking bit of malpractice and every fucking hospital, and there's about five of them that I've been in for the last three years, every fucking time as a political prisoner, they fucking force medicated me for delusions of fucking persecution, which are verifiable fucking incidences. You fucking cunt dogs. Sorry if I'm upset. I was actually gonna fucking kill myself today because the profound fucking neglect and abuse that I fucking deal with every day and I'm really fucking over it. You're lucky I've got a beautiful dog here to look after because I'd be fucking gone. You human beings are fucking disgraceful, judgmental, small-minded people who are too fucking cowardly 
to critique anything that fucking rules you and you're happy to be fucking followers and you're happy to be fucking um you're happy to be ruled and and just ruled by the roost of the fucking overarching government and you know what they're the fucking majority as long as every single fucking person doesn't get their little bit of prosperity fucking interfered with if they see a person like me struggling fucking dying on the end of the street they don't want anything to do with me you fucking cowards you know what i've been really brave in my life and i've been really i've had a superhuman resilience that's fucking god-given and you have all acted in order to disgrace to humiliate to abuse to persecute me and to act with neglect the whole fucking health system is a fucking joke. If any single fucking cop, fucking healthcare worker, my fucking family, my cunt brother and my cunt sister have ever fucking just, um, separated in their marriage, they would expect a fucking settlement and to separate. But they've got a different fucking set of rules when it comes to them and a different set for me. After all, I'm the gay one in the family. I'm the one with the problems. I'm the one who's um, angry, who brings people pain and misery. I'm the one who's got a mental illness. You know, I I've never given anything in my life I'm disgraceful. We should let him die. And you know what? If he's gonna die, or if anyone's causing him neglect, if anyone's standing in the way of his prosperity, then we should act to not do anything, choose not to act. And silence is complicity, my friends. Silence is complicity. And here's the thing. So, I started off on this, I've uh, gone on a bit of a rant, but bear with me. Um, there's a good part to this. I still want to fucking live, I want to survive, and I want to fucking give back to the community, and this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to get my fucking justice one of these days, and I'm worth millions and millions of dollars. I'm owed work cover, I'm owed a settlement from my former partner, I'm owed a fucking... Uh, <laughs> Dying in a hospital, you're not allowed to die in a hospital, that's the point, you have to go there not to die. And I'm owed um, my work cover, my insurances, a TPD, um, so much more. My business was ruined, I've been forced to be homeless for three years after I was revived from death, and under the watchful government of um, someone I'm not allowed to name, otherwise I'll be arrested because of AVOs, and this is how they're getting me. Um, they have on the government watch, they watched me become homeless and I became a homeless vagrant and I lived in the park in Daniel Police Paddocks. I lived in my car, I lived in Preston Woolies, I lived in Clifton Hill, I lived in um, Dandenong, I lived in Cranbourne, I lived in Preston. I drove around on the run from the law and the health officials who were trying to incarcerate me and take my freedom and still abuse me to the exclusion of every other single factor in my life that was actually affecting me. And um, because of that, um, I nearly killed myself again in December of 2023. And um, I've only just received accommodation and that's by Zabi Hussain Kill of Free Loving Australia. Thanks, mate. I appreciate all the good things you do for me, but at the moment I have, I'm squatting in a home I can't afford. I barely have food. I don't have any medicine. I don't have a psychologist. I don't have a psychiatrist and I don't have a GP. I don't have a drug and alcohol counselor. And I don't have a financial counselor and I don't have a lawyer. What I've got is a whole lot of fucking neglect. I've messaged Zabi. I've messaged Georgia, the OT. And I've messaged Annis C from Genu. They're the last three remaining individuals in my life, apart from me fucking people on Grinder, which is really a joy that um, I'm allowed to do. I'm not doing anything wrong. But um, but they're the last remaining three people I've got in the world. And I wrote to them a very serious email. 
that explain the neglect and I urge them to act. So far, so far they've refused to. They've refused to acknowledge me. I believe they're waiting for the time when no lawyer will come, no one will help me, and there'll be no intervention. The police will come and get me. They will be the ones driving me to the courthouse to a corrupt political system and a po corrupt um, police and corrupt um, court system. And they're gonna charge me with the crime that they arrested me for, which is an absurd um, thing that I never have done and not even ethically obliged to do and that I wouldn't, and if anyone knows me, and they do, they know that that's impossible. So um, they're gonna wait till I get arrested, and you know what's gonna happen? They're gonna put me in jail. And they're gonna put me in jail as the, as the victim, the person who's already suffered so much and given everything he has to the world, and who is still suffering, hearing voices, being persecuted, and um, who's already literally killed themselves from neglect. They've forced me to live as a homeless person for three years um, or squatting. They've allowed me no help, no support, um, no agency with human rights, no legal rights. And um, then they forced me to live in my car on top of that. And when I didn't die, they're gonna have a problem because I'm in Zabi's house living there for free. What an absurd, amount of um, you know discomfort that man is experiencing because of my existence they're going to forgive him um, me and they're going to forgive having a dead body in that house and they're going to put me in jail where um, criminal minds will be waiting as me as a targeted individual and a famous people and i'm going to suffer more abuse neglect and they're going to fucking destroy me in prison and i won't let that happen i'm trying not to let it happen but that's exactly what's going to happen because the three last remaining people in my life, Zabi, Anis, and Georgia the OT, are not responding to any of my calls, emails, or even public, public messages of support. So it's been 34 minutes. I've had a bit of a rant. When I get my money, I've created a trust fund at barrendodger.com.au. And I'm actually going to, I don't actually want, what's wrong with the dog? Were you all right, Crystal? She's having a bit of a spew, well on. You right? You right? Oh, poor little girl. Oh, poor little girl, you all right? Poor little girl, oh, my dog's sick. This is my worry too, because my former partner's threatened to kill her because I, my, my um, whistleblowing's led, 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 um, led, um, you right? It, it's led, led him to have to pay a million dollars embezzlement in corrupt, um, finances of his corrupt finances she's being sick i hope she's all right you all right crystal oh, she, oh she's eating grass okay and he's threatened to kill her and kill me now he's not going to have to when he's got the whole government on board is he um because they're going to persecute me to death and that's the exact reason they've given me um a month before i have to go to court it's because they're going to neglect me the whole time and try and elicit my suicide it's nearly working but I'm still speaking the truth and I'm still the authentic and real person, the authentic person that should be listened to. And I have nothing to hide and everything in the public domain. And they're trying to destroy me in any fucking way they can. So whatever you've been told about me, pedophile, rapist, extortionist, terrorist, threat to national security, apart from all the threat, threat to national security, it's, um, it's all lies. I'm a human being and I deserve um, my human rights. I deserve to have my human rights abuses reported to the NDIS Quality and Safeguards Commission as per the legal obligations of the pe people I'm contracted to. That is their legal obligation to me and it's not permissible that they don't do that. It's not permissible that I have no legal help and it's, you would think it's not permissible that an entire conspiracy can have a malicious intention to kill me with neglect and that um, if I had died today, then um, mental illness and drugs will be blamed and everyone's exonerated themselves from all liability or responsibility. And that's because um, Eternal, uh, Attorney General George Brandis has passed legislation um, exonerating all public officials from any um, detriment or, or liability when it comes to a targeted individual who um, suffers detriment or is harmed um, because of um, being a targeted individual and someone who's persecuted. I'm sorry for that big speech. I love the world. I really do.
and I'm <coughs> this abuse and neglect is too much for one person to deal with. I'm not coping. Whatever you do, don't believe the hype. Be a little bit proud, be a little bit courageous, and really stand up to those in enormous positions of power and privilege and money because they're in conceited positions of privilege and they're really harming the small guy and they're really harming the vulnerable guy and they're really harming the people who are already being discriminated against. So, I'm literally a murder victim and the world's forsaken me. So, all I want to do is live and survive in this society in order to serve it because I feel good to help people, you know. And that's all I've done for 30 years. And I just feel real hard done by. And I want a bit of peace and I deserve it. Everyone does that. Even if I was a rapist, a pedophile, an extortionist, and a serial killer, and a cabinet cannibal, and everything else, the government would still give me a home, food, shelter, and freedom from violence. And that's more than I've got from Free Living Australia or Genu or any. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to be proven wrong, but it's more than I've got at the moment, and it's more than I've had for a long time. Please help me. Please share this video. It's not okay that um, terrorism exists, but it's also so much exponentially worse that the Australian government is a terrorist organisation, not killing people randomly, but targeting individuals and discriminating them against them and causing neglect, harm, killing them, then covering up that killing and then causing them so much neglect, they're driven to suicide or jail again. It's called being a targeted individual, the Australian government. I'm one of them. My name is Baron Dodger. And I, I just hope this doesn't kill me because um, that's the aim. Okay, I'm gonna walk my dog home now. Uh, love you all, bye. I just wanted to add as an additional thing that at the same time I was being stitched up as an extortionist, you know, money shopping, um, that I um, was gifted $100,000 and um, that person who gifted it to me, which was unexpected and out of the blue, turned around and said, um, it was a mistake, voices told me to do it. So I gave it back. And that, goes to show that I'm not driven by money. I'm not driven by death. I'm driven by ethics and I'm driven to live. And I'm driven to support people because human judgment is an innate part of being a human being and that's how I've suffered. But um, there's good parts to humanity. I'm still hanging in there. I'm winging a prayer that someone's going to help me. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, it's sad. It's sad. It saddens me, my story. <laughs> Come on, Crystal. I don't want my dog to die. There she is. And I don't want to die either. And I don't want to be.
further oppressed or incriminated or incarcerated for something I'm innocent of. So, um, yeah, have a listen. And I just want to say, um, for the for the um, thing of giving money, like, it's just a sweetener. It's, I don't even want to have to bribe people to do this. It should be within someone out there's remit to um, help me. But no one has. So, money's what you're about. Money's what you get. So, um, yeah, if you can just please listen to the video. And, um, look, I don't know. I just love divinity. Please protect me from man-made law. All is fair in love and war, eh? Ain't that the truth? Okay, I'll let you listen to my video now. Thanks a lot. One last thing, can someone pay ID me a couple of hundred bucks? <laughs> I need some food, I need medicine. <laughs> I just need some cash, if someone can flick me some cash, if it's my pay ID, I'll put my number below, thank you. Very last thing, I actually love my family, <laughs> all my family, but they've just not been very um, understanding towards me. Anyway, I was just thinking, I'm glad to be, it's a human emotion, thanks. I keep having aftersorts, and I went to see, I don't see any church or anything like that, or they'll believe in the, um, in all, all the major religions, and the, um, the narratives and the fables and the um, stories that are behind them, it's archetypal truths, and, um, but I see a shaman, and the shaman said to me that I'm a, um, accept my new role <laughs> as a transformation expert, I didn't really know what that meant, but maybe it means if I've got a lot of prosperity, my aim is to um, to um, create um, change the currency of money, which is hollow and soulless, into a currency of um, meaning, hope, experience, joy, and love for um, Australia's most marginalised. Oh, Crystal Conklin, and um, in that way, she would have been right if this. Um, thing of mine comes to fruition of Baron Dodger to trust and um, to create meaningful experiences for Australia's most marginalised. The trans, the gay, the women, the black, the very young, the very old and the differently abled. And um, if I can transform all that currency into meaningful experiences for those people, I'd be really, really pleased. And um, I don't need much, like I only want the bare basics. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a secular ethicist and Buddhist and um, I use Buddhism to be better what I already was. And um, I only need very simple things to live. I don't live on much, um, just a house, food, medicine. I don't need a big house or a flashy car or anything like that. You know, I've just got home and um, that's my walk. It's been cathartic <laughs> and um, I'll thank you to help me. All right, thanks a lot.